So there I was, scrolling as I do each day, through the many listings on TradeMe, my country's equivalent to eBay. I happened upon a post, I could not believe my eyes. A true 35mm panorama camera, no reserve. Was there a catch? Well, yes. The seller, who seemed to be an old repair guy, had no idea if the camera worked. I just had to bid and win and find out. What did I have to lose but money? What did I have to gain? Well, a true panoramic camera that did not cost me $10,000. I was in Dunedin when my package arrived. Only two things arrived in the box. This camera and this article about the guy who made it. This pano camera is a Canon AV-1 that has had the guts ripped out of it. None of the mechanics or electronics are still inside. The only original mechanics that still survived is the take-up spool and the rewind mechanism. Everything else, including the mirror, is gone and the shutter is glued shut. Remember, a film camera is nothing more than a light-type box. And this light-type box is mainly used to house the film. With this camera, what actually shoots the shot is this leaf shutter lens that has been attached to the front of the camera. The creator of this camera was a fellow Kiwi called Bob Mainsmore. I've not been able to find out much about his work, and it may have existed pre-social media. This camera had ended up at a camera repair services and was now mine to use. It was sold untested and I was hopeful it did work. I headed out to a nearby beach to test this camera out. I chose to use a roll of Agfa CT Precia, an expired slide film that had been well kept. Why slide film you may ask? Yes, it's expensive as a test film, but it's the most honest film when testing. Slide film has limited dynamic range, so if you shoot Sunny 16 and the photos come out, it's a strong indicator that your camera exposes correctly. My first shot was this racetrack near the beach. And well, sometimes the lab burns the start of the roll. Or maybe I did. Who knows? Okay, so this is how it turned out. And yeah, a little off angle on the horizon, but the camera works. On the other side of the racetrack is this location which I've shot before to disappointing results but not this time. One downside to this camera is that you don't know your frame count and if you are tired, you might not remember if you've shot a double exposure. So for good measure, you might take another shot, which does burn through your film. And this might be my favorite photo from the roll, even though I'm not in it. This feels like me and my life and my things. Whilst I was testing this camera out, I was doing more than one project. I really like how my other camera looked with my camera bag in this photo. A little bit around the corner, I spotted Green Island and knew this is the kind of composition that panoramas are suited for and why I bought this camera. After taking a really good photo, I ended up double exposing. You do have to be careful with cameras like this. Because if you don't, you'll get more than one double exposure and that can waste a lot of film as panoramas on 35mm give you less frames.
and as you can see I did it again. I think it was a me issue and not the camera, but time will tell. I did get this photo, which is quite unlike my more usual photos of this mountain and really shows off the benefit of panoramic compositions. The slide film covers are nothing but delicious. I really do wish this film was still manufactured. The blues dazzle in a way no other film stock for me has ever done so before. I made sure to save a few frames for when I got back home. I like taking photos of Wellington cityscape, though I'm not sure what happened here with these double exposures. I carried on my way walking along the beach and bay towards the city, finishing off my roll. So some upsides to this camera is that I could shoot infrared film in this camera no problem unlike the X-Pad which has a sensor inside that is quite damaging to infrared film. This means I can shoot panos like this one I took on the Fujika 617 but it also means I could shoot panos with this legendary film like this roll of ectochrome infrared which might be something that I end up doing in the future. Another benefit is that this camera can shoot long exposures unlike the X-Pan, and I mean proper multi-hour exposures. This would be great for star trails. The downsides to this camera, however, is the limited speed of 200. It is difficult to change the speed also as well. Most of the time I'll be shooting around 125 and f16 on sunny days. It is also impossible to tell the focus, so I have to zone focus, which is not something I often do. Other than that, it's a cheap, true pano camera that will take some stunning landscape photos whilst I'm traveling. This camera has also got me thinking. I might build a camera like this one, but better. The big issue with this camera and all pano cameras is that you don't get many shots. And if I'm traveling on a big hike, then it's a lot of hassle to shoot with. So what I have here is my first Canon F1, which broke. The repair cost is the same, if not more, in my country than getting a new Canon F1. So what I could do is gut this camera's body, find a lens to cover the large image circle, like the one on the AV-1, and then add this to the camera. This is a 250 frame film chamber for the Canon F1. It's never been used, and maybe someday, when I've got this project done, it will be a unique, one-of-a-kind pano camera like this Canon AV-1, but with the capacity to take over a hundred photos bulk loaded that I put into it. Until next time, or whenever that next project is done, it's been real guys, 